Let's take a look at some information on the DXY or Dixie or US dollar index for Brave New Coin on this trading tip Tuesday. It's always good to get some refreshers, even if you've learned about what this is or know what this is before. For instance, I didn't know it was created in 1971 when we got off the gold standard. Pretty interesting and purposeful decision to create this index. So first thing to realize is that it is an index, meaning it's a basket of US trade partner currencies. And the index goes up when the US dollar strength increases relative to these currencies. So immediately we can have that conversation about us printing a bunch of money. Why is the Dixie going up? Well, it's going up because relative to the other countries, maybe we are printing less. Yeah, I don't think that's necessarily the case. But that's one way to look at this. This isn't purely the value of the dollar or purchasing power of the dollar. It's relative value to the other currencies. It's also heavily weighted against the euro. So if there's more shenanigans going on in euro land than here, Dixie's going to have some strength. And you'll notice there's no taco, as it's affectionately called, uh, the Mexican currency, uh, USD MXN, I think it is. Uh, there's no Chinese influence, no South Korea, no Brazilian, you know, no other partners here. You know, maybe this needs an update, which I think it does personally, to better reflect uh, world currencies and trade partners, especially with NAFTA. You'd think they would have updated this with NAFTA. Certainly Canada's in there. Why not uh, Mexico? So it says it's only been altered once. And again, it created, got created shortly before 1971 when it uh, rose to prominence really ever since then. Tons of influencing events, obviously globally, macro, but the big, big thing is uh, the money, pr money printing. The classic Bitcoiner inflation hedge drum beating which all of a sudden seems super relevant over the past year. And we can also look at correlations and everything else relative to the Dixie. So extremely lower interest rates encourage greater risk appetite because everybody's looking for a yield. Very similar to proof of stake, very similar to Dick, um, not Dixie, um, yield farming in general, right? If, if there is an incentive with a high yield for a savings account, people are going to stash money there. If there isn't, they're going to look for stuff that isn't a savings account, that isn't staking, that in this case was DeFi over the past couple of months. And again, this post goes on to talk about M2, what M2 is regards to the money supply versus M1. And all this is more of a macro conversation, but Bitcoin has joined that macro conversation. The more Peter Schiff tweets we have relative to BTC and gold, the better. It just brings BTC into that conversation. So in general, if Dixie's increasing, it's risk off. If Dixie is decreasing, it's risk on. If Dixie is decreasing, it's more emerging markets. These are all, you know, I say loose correlations, but, and you can read on and on about everybody talking about US stimulus, inflation, you know, so it makes sense that Bitcoin is in that conversation. It makes sense when you look at SPX, NDX, all the stocks, all the meme stonks, mooning. The money's got to go somewhere. And it's not a savings account, so it's thus far been uh, crypto or stocks. And the Dixie has suffered over the past six months for that. So again, commodity prices fall when Dixie increases. Kind of the risk on conversation. And what affects it the most is supply and demand of the underlying currencies in the index, which makes sense. Obviously, inflation, economic performance, credit ratings, market sentiment, foreign affairs. So there's a lot of influ influencing factors here. And the correlations are weak-ish with BTC. But our strongest bull movements in crypto have been when we've negatively correlated with DXY. This is a rolling 30 week. And maybe you'd have to break this down mathematically a bit further. But since 2017, for the most part, we've been negatively correlated with DXY. These negative correlations don't always represent 
bullishness and crypto positive correlations don't always represent bearishness. I think it's the flipping of a long-term correlation that makes the biggest impact. So us going from deeply negative to positive here is a bit problematic in a trend reversal sense. You know, in 2019, 2018, we were deeply negative, flipped positive, and we're bullish. So it's a bit subjective, definitely reading into this. If we go to the daily 30-day rolling, pretty clear that we started to top as we got more and more correlated with the DXY. Most of the post-corona run was heavily negatively correlated with the DXY. So for me, this is people looking for that inflation hedge with the stimulus things coming, a chaos hedge, people call it as well, with global economy shutdowns, the general shift to all things digital. Bitcoin was a big benefactor of that. So as we turn the corner globally on that stuff, we're less bullish than we were when uh, you know everybody was bearish on civilization at that point. The DXY itself is basically been ranging since 2014, and it was hitting a range low, which is why everyone was sort of celebrating the death of the dollar if it broke this range. It's kind of rooting for your own demise if you're US-based. I don't think the Dixie needs to die in order for BTC to do well, but it certainly helps. And we had this massive um, 5,200 bear trend starting in you know, the corona stuff basically in 2020. And that looks as though it may be ending, so that would be problematic for the bullish side of things right now. And this in and of itself isn't enough to like crush crypto. But when the headwind is already bearish, this is certainly beating the lion when it's down. Um, I had been watching the four hour, which had several failed attempts at reversals. And then it got this falling wedge situation and broke up in a big way over the past couple days. Just adding to the further bearishness of crypto. And everybody's looking at this. You know, they're looking for yield in anything. They're looking at where can number go up. This is like institutional people, right? This isn't just retail people on crypto Twitter. Uh, but they're looking at the DXY. They're looking at macro stuff. Cloud is telling you this has been oversold for quite some time with a pending inverted head and shoulders here, a pending mean reversion to 96. This, I think if we do go that way, that direction, we're definitely going to see 20K BTC, that type of bearish strength. Now, it doesn't necessarily make sense because we're still printing a bunch of money here. We're reverse repoing. We're getting these trillion dollar infrastructure packages. We're doing all this stuff to destroy the Dixie relative to all these other currencies in the basket. But thus far, it hasn't really seemed to matter much. Based purely on technicals, this looks incredibly bottomy. And when you draw when you draw out the DXY invert head and shoulders with this multi-month bullish divergence, there's a pretty great case to be made that we're in for a wild ride on the way down uh, in the v BTC land. Some of these movements are also we had that FOMONC meeting, interest rates again, you know, that's gonna play a big role in people fleeing to risk off type of vehicles like the u.s dollar uh, yield curve is another conversation you can have here about the 10 year the one year all this stuff plays a role and the bigger crypto gets the more it's brought into the fold and into that conversation especially with institutional people who have a ton of money the last thing i'll talk about is the usdcny which when it was above seven it was like you know, <laughs> the sky is falling in uh, China land regards to devaluation and capital flight and money to look looking to get out of China. So maybe the USDCNY is going to be less impactful down here in that uh, China's ramping up their war drums and banning all things crypto. But a devaluation of the yuan against the USD would encourage capital flight, would encourage alternative assets would encourage crypto speculation and gambling even on the fringes uh, in in China. So this is also something to watch as a currency pair as well. 
So I wish it was in the DXY. I think it'd be better. I think it definitely needs a revision. And overall, the DXY has been loosely correlated with macro trends in crypto. So to see Dixie strength recently is definitely not helping uh, the bullish case, the buy the dip case in the near term. That's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.